soldiers can die if, if you can't maneuver and you end up stuck somewhere. We had two occasions where the vehicles turned over and soldiers died because they drowned. They flipped over because of the mobility. Since Hannibal crossed the, the Alps with elephants, uh, mobility is always a challenge for vehicles. Whether it's getting stuck in 1917 in the fields in France or Afghanistan, when vehicles become immobilized, troops are put at risk and the mission is jeopardized. Being able to predict mobility is going to just increase the survivability of our of our soldiers and our vehicles. Anything that we can do to protect our soldiers, we should be doing, and mobility is a key factor in survivability. It's a subject NATO has been exploring for years, how to predict mobility. NATO expands in Europe from the north, from Norway, to the south, to Romania. We have the whole range of terrain we can imagine in Europe, and then we have North America and stabilization operations in very desert areas like Iraq or uh, Afghanistan. So when we can then predict what vehicle we need or in which terrain our troops have to fight gives us a big advantage over our enemy. Out in the field, commanders have to consider many factors when deciding which vehicles to deploy. So you got to understand the capabilities of the vehicle. you got to understand the terrain that you're operating in. Hemets or logistical vehicles are really good on secondary roads, but it's really difficult for them to go across big, rocky terrain. And then for the U.S. Army, we have Abrams and Bradley. There are combat track vehicles, and they're just significantly more mobile when you get into rocky, difficult, wet, soft soil terrain. The current industry standard for predicting mobility is the NATO Reference Mobility Model, a software tool that has detailed soil data for different regions of the world and predicts terrain traversability, but it dates back to the 70s. The NATO task group AVT248 is now developing a new set of standards referred to as the next generation NATO Reference Mobility Model. We developed this tool in, in a NATO task group and uh, this task group is in, in the uh, science and technology organization of the NATO. So there are experts from industry, uh, government and so on. They all work together, bring in their expertise and uh, develop this common tool for them. And then they agree also on a standard. The current model is outdated, it's old. It's still useful, but the current systems are different nowadays. Our vehicles have stability control systems, they have uh, tire pressure systems, and all those types of systems make a difference in your mobility off-road. And so we really need to update the NATO standards to be able to predict those types of things. And also, computer simulations have come a long way since the 70s, so we can do a lot on a computer nowadays that we couldn't before. So we're talking about complex terror mechanics and simple terror mechanics, and in, in complex terror mechanics, we're really trying to model the physics of the soil and the interaction of the vehicle with the soil. And so there's a lot that can be done if we understand the variability in the soil and the terrain uh, with predicting mobility. Much of the research into predicting mobility has been carried out at the Kiwi Knoll Research Center, or KRC, in Michigan. It's a multi-terrain site spread across 900 acres of land. Certain areas of, of the test course have been constructed to represent certain interesting types of terrain, especially types of terrain that we might not particularly have, uh, desert terrain, rocky terrain, and such. The whole point of doing the testing is to collect the real-world data and bring that back into the design area, back into where we can manipulate the vehicle designs and look at different changes and things that might affect or improve ground vehicle mobility. To do that, we have to collect the data, and the vehicles are heavily instrumented. Accelerometers, wheel force sensors, uh, GPS trackers, that data is created into a large database and then that is then digested and reduced into a usable, comprehensible data set that the vehicle designer can use to further the vehicle design. There's many different factors that can affect mobility. Uh, you have uh, the terrain itself, 
which is the type of terrain, the type of soil, the constituents within the soil, the water content within the soil. It all has an impact on mobility. And then you have the vehicle level characteristics and how the vehicles are designed, the types of suspension, whether it's road wheels, the size of the wheel, the amount of power you're delivering to the wheel, the tractive effort we call it, or the track system. So it, it's not only the, the design of the vehicle that you need to take into account, but you also have to be able to accurately characterize the soil and understand the strength of the soil, how well it can carry weight, and then how long it will withstand repeated traffic ability. So the first vehicle may go over very easily, but then the second, third, fourth, it gets more and more difficult as the soil breaks down. Soil varies a lot. So there's all different sorts of soils and all different mixes of, of those sorts of things. So sand, silt, clay, organic material, gravels, rocks, whatever. And if we look at the NATO countries, those soils vary up all the way from a dry sand on a beach somewhere in France up into high organic materials and clays in places like Estonia and Poland and, and the northern Baltics. The project that we're working on has to cover all of those and we have to be able to model that and know what, what's going to happen to the vehicle when it dries in. Some of the best studies into soil types has been carried out at the KRC, which is part of the Michigan Tech University. For decades now, they've been collecting samples using a bevometer. The bevometer is a, a relatively large piece of equipment that's designed to measure two different things. And one of those is what we call shear. And what that does is it gives us an idea of what traction we can get out of the tire. So how is that tire going to grab on the soil and, and what strength can we get out of it as it spins? The other side of it is a thing that we call plate sinkage. And the plate sinkage gives us a compressive strength or bearing strength. And what that does is it tells us how much is the vehicle going to sink. So coupled, we get vehicle sink so much, and as it's moving along, as it's sinking, how much can it grab the soil and pull itself along? And that's pretty much the basis of mobility, those two things coupled together. So the bevimeter is a device to be able to go out in the field and get those measurements, then be able to put them into the models uh, and spit back out the mobility. While previous mobility models have combined data from vehicle terrain and soil testing, for the next generation NATO reference mobility model, software companies are getting involved for the first time. A number of vendors have been called upon to use the data to produce models which simulate terrain traversability. Some have focused on complex terra mechanics. Complex terra mechanics, the definition is uh, a modeling uh, soil with uh, 3D motion of the soil and 3D forces between the soil and the vehicle parts, so including tires, uh, tracks, so it can basically predict uh, the speed, it can predict uh, exactly when the vehicle would get stuck on uh, flat terrain or uh, going up a slope. If the terrain has soft soil, then basically the, uh, the soil presents a resistance to the vehicle, so we have to account for the resistance. And of course, the softer the soil, the more you sink in, so the more resistance the soil would have. So what we're trying to do is generate a common framework that people in the mobility industry can use for predicting uh, soft soil mobility in particular. So we are leveraging uh, new uh, simulation technologies that are already mature on hard surface, so uh, regular ground vehicle uh, that you use uh, every day, and taking that off-road. So the importance here is to be able to predict when uh, a vehicle that might not even have been designed yet, uh, that's in the design process, uh, trying to say the capabilities of this vehicle on the, the type of terrains and soils that it will experience. You don't want to have a vehicle that you don't know what its mobility performance is. So we're trying to do this in an accurate way using uh, the latest simulation technologies. This is a 3D environment that lets us see everything and place it in the right place in the universe. It's also the simulation environment. Once we're playing it, we can actually see what's happening now that the simulation is running. So this software actually covers all the different aspects of the simulation from once you have the initial data, you've entered it into the model, um, you've collected all the different pieces together, and finally you can actually run the data. And on top of that, we can also see um, plots of, of what's happening um, inside the vehicle itself. So I can see live speeds, I can see live suspension performance, I can see live soil traction, tire slip, um, vehicle RPM. All of these values can also be read live as I'm working on this. 
Making a model allows us to do a lot more virtual comparison based on a lot of different uh, environmental aspects. So whether or not it's in a, a given pavement situation or off-road situation, if you have a virtual model, you can do an endless amount of what-if studies. And it can be not only on the physical environment that the vehicle is operating in, but it could be the vehicle itself. So if you wanted to understand how the vehicle performed with different tires, for example, uh, you could easily swap out the tires and run them around and get an understanding of its performance without having to do any physical testing. While the simulation models help us predict the performance of the vehicle, how does soil variability impact the variability in the speed? In order to answer that question, a method called uncertainty quantification is used. Doing uncertainty quantification gives more information to the end user. So not only do we have a simulation model, you can take a simulation model, you can put in specific soil type or parameters, you get out one speed value. The question is how good is that speed value? If it tells you you can go 25 miles per hour, can you really go 25 miles per hour? Now if we do uncertainty quantification given the variability of your soil parameters, now the speed we get out is a distribution, so maybe the distribution varies from 10 miles an hour to 35 miles per hour, but we can see you have a 90% chance of going 25 to 35 miles per hour and only a 10% chance of going less than 25 miles per hour. So it provides that information of how likely it is you can obtain a given speed. The next generation NATO reference mobility model will not be a specific computer code, but a set of standards and benchmarks, which governments and companies can use to compare against their own mobility prediction tools to determine if they are compliant and can be deemed a next generation NATO reference mobility model software tool. The model will help users make better informed decisions regarding mission planning, vehicle design and acquisition. So that's why this NATO reference mobility model is so important is from an acquisition perspective, when we buy systems, we need to understand how good they are from a mobility perspective. But also then operationally, we need to be able to understand how well can I go from point A to point B, can I carry out this operation with this vehicle or a set of vehicles. So another nice thing about the NATO reference mobility model has been it, it can be run very quickly. So you can run it over a large swath of land and look at all these different types of vehicles and how fast they might go through some area. So that's important from an operational planning perspective. It's important from, a, uh, from an acquisition perspective on deciding which vehicles to use or buy. If, for example, two companies come to us and say, you know, we have two different vehicles and we want to evaluate which vehicle is better, we can use the NATO reference mobility model and that's what we, how we often do it. We use it and we run it through s scenarios and say which vehicle is actually more mobile. If all the NATO nations would be using this as a standard uh, to design to these standards, they test to these standards so that it can be operational anywhere in the NATO countries, it's completely interoperable. So that, that is in, in itself is very important that is done at the NATO level. Ultimately, this is, this is the first step. We're hoping to, to develop a standard modeling uh, approach that will allow NATO nations to, to use various levels of multi-body multi physics models at the procurement stage of a vehicle, at the notional design stage of vehicles, and operationally in the field for the operational user at the end. The challenge for the NATO task group is keeping up with advancements in technology. While most of their attention has been spent on manned ground vehicles, increasingly on the battlefield, commanders are using unmanned systems. When we get into autonomy and autonomous vehicles, we don't have a good way to make that assessment. The NATO reference mobility model cannot do that. So we are proposing to form a new exploratory team under NATO to start looking at beyond the next generation of NATO reference mobility models, how do you predict autonomous system and their mobility? So obviously that's an important area for quite a few of our partner nations. So if I can picture myself as a commander or a platoon leader trying to plan a mission within a certain time period, and I have a limited amount of time to do that, so if I can understand, other than just looking at a map, what that terrain looks like on the ground, and somebody can tell me for sure that I can maneuver these elements through that area within a certain time period, that, that's the most important piece to me. And at the end of the day, it's all about supporting the warfighter, making them more effective, keeping them safe, and letting them come home alive and in good health after uh, we ask them to do our nation's work. Mm -hmm.